sounds like. Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Something very special today. And this just came up just like that because I heard they were in town. Jaguar's here. And this is the XKSS 1956. It is not a kit. It is not a replica. It is a brand new car built by Jaguar. Uh, you know, there's a whole story about the nine cars that were destroyed in a fire. Well, these are built using the original techniques and the original materials. It's pretty amazing that... Uh, Jaguar went to all the trouble to do this, and I think it's just fantastic that they stopped by my garage here. Let's bring in Tim from the uh, Jaguar Classic Center. Boy, thanks for bringing okay. us here. And I, this is what, what a treat. Thank you for is. having us. Really, oh, really, uh, pleasure. really exciting. Yeah, I think uh, we, we're we're likely uh, equally excited because you know this is. Uh, I think a very, very special place, and we're happy that you allow us to bring the car here. Well, no, and, and you know, if you want to leave it here, it's not a problem. Ah, uh, we might need it for a if, bit. If but, it's uh, that special, you can yeah. leave it here, and I, <laughs> I, I certainly won't complain about it. Yeah, I mean, I think that is so great that you guys, as well as some of the European manufacturers doing this classic, uh, all the parts are being available, it's coming from Jaguar. I mean, I think that's really wonderful. Mercedes-Benz does a wonderful job of it, too, and I think it's really great that I'll be, always be able to get parts from my 120 and my XKE. I mean, it's amazing to me how the value of those cars, when I was in high school, they were seven, eight hundred bucks for an XKE. I mean, it's, it's crazy. And these, these they couldn't even sell in 55, right? Because they were just considered too specialized. Yeah, absolutely. They, those, were actually, those were actually only ever done because in 55, the D-types, which were race cars, they couldn't sell them. So they decided, let's just make a road-going car out of it. So that was the first supercar ever built. You know, a Le Mans winning race car converted into a road car and specifically for the US and that's why we're here because it's like definitely a US kind of spec car. Right, Absolutely right. crazy for the period of time. Well I was fortunate enough to drive Steve McQueen's and nice. I must say I was because a lot of times you get an old car and you think okay it's not as fast as a new Corvette or something it's not a, it blew me away it was the best handling one of the fastest most satisfying cars to drive I mean I was just stunned at what an exciting automobile it was. I mean, it handled, it felt almost contemporary. It was amazing. It was amazing how good it was. Because I just expected some old, you know, sometimes you drive, it's a long time ago. This is 60 yeah, years ago. Yeah, it's 60 yeah. year old design. But what they've done is, I think, you know, this car was actually inspired by the, um, by the aero, or aeronautics, so by airplanes. Right. So it's like aluminum monocoque, a front frame, a rear frame, a super strong engine, and then everything is very light. And the whole envelope of the car, the whole frame, is really like compact. So the, the aerodynamics are great, and it's specifically built for Le Mans high speeds right. and, then sh and then hard brakes, tough corners, so um, it handles beautifully. And the other thing that's different is, because a lot of people will show up with XK replicas of one kind or another, and they look pretty good. But they don't have that engine. They have the standard, they have an engine out of an XJ6 or something of that nature. It's not cantilevered over to one side. It doesn't have the, the same head. It's a totally different, it's a totally different motor. And that's what makes this one so exciting. Okay, let's, let's start here. This is the original color, correct? Yeah, this is the, what we call Sherwood Green. So mm -hmm. that was the original launch color. Um, I don't think uh, that there is any car out there in the moment that would be that would carry that color because the car that was the original launch car was actually resprayed, and it carried a green interior. But we wanted to make this special, so we said this combination is pretty nice: Sherwood right. green with a tan interior. And um, you know, you mentioned the engine. We've actually been um, back over Bedwards in, uh, in order to get it right. So we right. found an original um, D-type block at a dealer in London wow. that was all paper wrapped and we bought it and used it to actually make new casts. So we've, I think, you know, we can't really say how much um, effort we put into this, but it is, it's incredible. And we really wanted it to make it uh, in any detail, absolutely perfect. And you're building what, nine of these, correct? Yeah, yeah. Now, absolutely. as I remember, there was a fire at Browns Lane, right? And uh, uh, how many chassis were destroyed? So they were, in a matter of fact, there were, um, we always say nine cars were destroyed. That's co correct, or we lost nine cars. Right. But to be extraordinarily precise, in the fire, five D-types burned, mm -hmm. plus one that was a customer car. The company gave one car back to the, to the customer, so he had a different D-type then. 
and four cars were actually overall dismantled because they needed the parts. Right. Um, so overall, we lost nine cars, and uh, we are replacing those nine cars that were actually earmarked to be um, converted into XKSS. So these are truly continuation cars. Yeah, okay. absolutely. These are built exactly the same way. You haven't fudged it because brakes are better now or any of that. It's, it's exactly no, as it we, was. We, we, it? We've done super microscopic adjustments. For example, yeah. we use different um, brake pipe material because yeah. it's better material today. And we actually use a different material for the tank bag, right. for the back tank, because of ethanol. Right. Because the old rubber material wouldn't actually last and then sure. it would vibrate. So very, very, very minor details. And every single of that, we probably debate a week and a half to make sure that we do it right. Can we open the hood to see what it Sure, we can. Like yeah, absolutely. There? Can you help me on the other side? Sure, sure. In fact, I believe, was it a D-type that just sold at auction? It's the highest price ever paid for a British car. What, yeah, what? yeah, that was a D-type. That was a Le Mans winning D-type. 18 mil, how much was it? Uh, yeah, 18 hammer price, so with all in, a couple of, a bit more than 20. So, a million um, pounds or dollar? Actually, dollars. Yeah, yeah. okay. Well, first thing the road car never had was the dry sump, correct? Absolutely, I think. Yeah. And that tank itself is, um, is actually a miracle that that actually works because it has so many rivets and screws and bolts in there. <laughs> so we were actually, I think just making that properly and yeah. making sure that that is tight was, a, was quite a challenge for the team because, um, you know, they put so many holes into this, it's, it's quite, quite tight. But of course, that leads to the fact that the engine comes slower quite a bit. Right. And uh, which was good for the center of gravity of the engine. If you if you look at the details, um, you know, the, in time, the designers had done this so tight, there is hardly anywhere any space. So if you look at how, how close the engine sits compared to the bonnet, right. there's hardly any space in that. So and it's tilted slightly it, to the yeah, side, Yeah, it's correct? tilted to yeah. the side in order to, to, to fit it in there properly to make the car overall very low. So compared to the power and weight, that this car has, it's very, very, very small and tight. Now this is the D cylinder head, is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. It's bigger valves, that's the difference? Yes, bigger valves, let's say, and it comes with the three Weber um, carburetors. So it's all the original setup um, as we as as it was used in period. That's right, because no JAG car. road cars ever use Webers, correct? No. Right, so, oh, very cool. So this, so you've got a straight shot here that when it's cantilevered yeah. a little bit like that. Yeah. Boy, nicely done. And you can, you can see actually that the, that the the cover of the of the of the air intake thing is actually bended out because otherwise it wouldn't fit under the bonnet. So every yeah. single bit of space is there. And if you look at the bonnet, the 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 um, the form of the bonnet here had to follow in order to allow the the block right, to go underneath. Right, sort of power so bulge yeah, here. Yeah. So it's not symmetric. Yeah. Um, which is on the on the later road cars, it's always symmetric, whereas um, on that it had to be asymmetric to actually house the engine. Wow, and I love the fact that all four tires are the same size. It just sits nicely. Yeah. I mean, I get a little tired of these cars, these mammoth huge tires in the back. It just, it takes some of the lightness yeah, the, out of the yeah, car, yeah. you know? Uh, and those were considered big tires back in the day, weren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and it's now a, they just look like anything you'd find on a sedan, but pretty amazing. It's a four-speed Moss box. It's a four-speed box. It's a race, race box. It's a race clutch as well. So. When we rolled it in, I think you could see, you know, it's, um, it's, a, it's a very tough clutch. We call it's that really, a bear trap in America. It's yeah. just on off, right? I think bear trap off. is a perfect word for it. Yeah, I need yeah. to, we, we'll adopt that in, in, in England. Is it a, gonna call it, synchro call it a bear first trap. gear? Yeah, sorry, it's a, it's a, it's a. Oh, it did have a synchro first gear, huh? It has a for, for synchro first, okay. first gear, yeah. But, but a four speed, not a five speed transmission. Four. Right, okay. The interesting bit, I think, the interesting um, detail about the car is, for example, the brakes. And I think what Jaguar did in the period, I think, you know, in the 50s, they were so successful in Le Mans specifically, because Le Mans was all about braking. Right. So, you know, Jaguar invented the disc brake, and that actually probably kept them competitive for three, four, five years until the rest right. actually catch, caught up. Now, but did the they invent the disc brake, or they were the first to use it? I think they invented it and developed it together with Dunlop. Because I remember Crosley in 1948 had a disc brake on the Little America. There were a couple of very, because airplanes had them, but I think Jag was the first to utilize yeah. it, certainly yeah. in a racing car. Yeah, and, 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 and definitely, and it was the first cars. one having it on road cars or yeah. as a serious thing. But in that time, the, you know, these brakes are quite, quite complicated. They get many different um, um, cylinders, and the, the brake pump, so the, the power support pump, is actually on the gearbox. So um, that leads as well to the fact if you reverse, you know, there is no, there oh, is no, no, there is no power on that. So you need oh, okay. to be aware of that. And up yeah. to, up to 10 miles, you really need to slam it hard so uh, that, that the brake really does what it wants. 
But you know that was a development um, um, time, and then of course later they 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 transported it. Yeah, to and this really was an innovative car. You know, at the time we always think of Ferrari as being state of the art, but they were actually quite primitive. They kept drum brakes and body on frame and all that kind of stuff to really after everybody else did. Yeah. Fantastic engines and transmissions, but braking and suspension and chassis pretty yeah, basic. I, I yeah. think what, why Jaguar was so successful is because they've just built the best package overall. Right. You know, it was a very good aer aerodynamics, very small um, um, package, very small outline, super high performance, en performance engines. And then, you know, the technology with this, this bit is a, is a monocoque structure. Um, and then there's a rear frame and a front frame, um, which is quite um, innovative for the period of time. You know, Jaguar was an innovation company all the time. Through. Right, right. And this is the last days when you could literally drive a car across Europe to Le Mans, race, win the race, put the trophy in the passenger seat, and drive back again. Yeah, no, that's actually what they did. It's yeah, quite I funny. Mean, it's, you know, we get... It doesn't even seem possible. Imagine today where Formula One cars are treated like, oh, you know, people, could, you can't, a little pebble in the road, oh my gosh, you know. You know, this thing was a road car. It's hilarious. Yeah. No, and it's, it's funny because, you know, some, some of the, we get lots of the pictures, and, and when you see a picture of like four D types in front of a pub, you know, and you know the date is just after Le Mans, yeah. and then, you know, you know what they were doing, and then they hopped back on and, and actually went, uh, went, went home. So, um, it's, uh, it's been a different time, I would say. Now, these, uh, these windows are not rolled down, they're fixed. They're fixed windows, yep. You Did can they come have... off in the road car? You could take them off, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's either on or off. And right. the same is, you know, we have, a, we have a roof, so you could actually put the roof up. But, um, you know, you, you, you mentioned Steve McQueen's car. So right. he had actually, he had it bespoke, his XKSS. So he, for example, he had, a, he had a glove box cover made. And he had most of the time he drove it without the the windscreens and then just a tonneau roll over it and yeah. he took the took the um the luggage carriage away so you see different uh, images of the of and the you know past. i remember it in the late 70s early 80s being a road car seeing his car you, you pass, went by you on sunset boulevard <laughs> or being in front of a restaurant it was just a really cool road car. Now it's of course an icon that you can't even imagine being on the street. But yeah. then it was fun to just see it amongst, because although this has a tremendous visual impact now, when you see it compared to modern cars, Toyotas and things, it, it, oh my God, it's, you know, it's low and it's, it's sleek. I mean, it really, it really makes yeah. an impression in this sea of jelly bean cars. This thing really does stand out. Yeah, no, it's funny because we, 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 we're around here for a couple of days, luckily, and uh, you know, the crew was filming and uh, they met a, a, a former police officer um, and, they, you know, he was talking, yeah, I, I used to chase uh, people around here in the in Mulholland Drive. And then we asked him, oh, did you ever chase uh, Steve McQueen? And he said, I think I did. In a green, smallish car, pretty loud and very fast. Yes, definitely. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, so, so we met him, him and he said he, but he did, couldn't get him. So Now, I notice it has, you're looking at eight grand on the tack there. Was it really eight grand? Did this, it did. This it did rev that high, yeah. Yeah. So it, it, because it needs to, because you know the four-speed engine uh, gearbox, and then with the engine, it needs to actually to get to the speed, um, it had to rev pretty high. So um, yeah, it does. Uh, and quite I a love lot of the rest. fact that it put a luggage rack on it, like you like you're going to take a trip in this car and just strap suitcases in the back here. It just, yeah, that always makes but, me laugh. I don't but, know why. but you know, honestly, I could I could you know I could see myself or you you probably you know having a suitcase or a, a weekend a bag on there you yeah, know somebody fun. with you yeah. for a nice trip down to somewhere in California and just enjoy the weekend. Let's and look at the interior, uh, the wood steering wheel. Boy, that seems a lot fancier than I remember, but that's the way they did it, huh? Yeah, the, um, you know, it's, it's interesting, the, the, the level of detail we put into the steering wheel, because we, we, have a, we have a pretty extensive archive. So we went in and, and actually got all the archive material out and uh, tried to reproduce exactly how the steering wheel was. And um, we think this is, this is the closest we can get to. Um, and they were manufactured properly, um, but it wasn't anything very special, to be honest. And the amazing thing is, which seems almost unbelievable today, no seatbelts. Nobody has these sort of short sleeves, <laughs> cigarettes. Yeah. I mean, it's, 
you know, it's, it was a different time, and uh, seatbelts were like, ugh. You know, if you talk to, and I, and I had the, the, the pleasure to meet Sterling Moss, or Sterling Moss recently, as well as uh, Norman Dewars, and if you talk to them, they're still of the opinion that it's better without seatbelts, because if you have an accident, it throws you out of the car. Yeah, it throws you out of the car. Throw the car. Yeah, you yeah, don't get thrown get, out of the yeah, car. Just get yeah. thrown out of the car, and they probably all, you know, all of them who are still alive today has probably survived three or four of those. So. Now, Norman, mm -hmm. do you see, how old, he's got to be close to 100, isn't he? He's 97 now, yeah. He's 97, that, that, that is very close to 100. That it's very close to 100. Yeah, and definitely. I met him at Pebble Beach. Hi, Jay, how you doing there? He shook my hand. I said, ow, oh, Jesus. He's incredibly yeah. energetic. and, and He was the guy stuff. that took that car to 120 miles an hour on, what's the road? Jaba how do you say it? Uh, was it in Belgium, wherever it was? Wherever they, where the, where the XKE, where the XK120 earned the 120 mile an hour. Um, I know and, what you mean. I, yeah. yeah. Right. So he was the guy that did that one. He tested this one in 1961. This one, and he's still out there doing Jags. It's, it's, yeah, and he's it's a, amazing. And he's a pretty good driver still. Oh, so yeah, quite, yeah, 97 uh, years old. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, you want to get thrown clear. Yeah, try that sometime. <laughs> I mean, it, it was just a, a different era. You know, I always love that expression when the drivers are fat and the tires are skinny. You know, now it's, now it's the other <laughs> way around. You, know, you used to see these guys in big gut and they get in the car and they'd manhandle around. You know, just fantastic. Fantastic. Now notice that they didn't use wire wheels because there probably wasn't a wire wheel that could take the kind of power, right? Yeah, and it was, of course, as well, lighter. Those, those, this is a magnesium um, alloy, so right. it was a lighter, lighter um, wheels and tires. And of course, they, they put lots of effort into getting those cars to a, a, as low as possible weight. Um, so and what does it weigh? Um, it is below a thousand kilograms. So okay. it's um, so 1,000 kilograms. 2,000 pounds. In America, be about 2,000 pounds. Wow. Wow, that's pretty. And it's. 260 horsepower, is that what it was? Some of the, something like that line, probably a bit bit over that. Yeah, so um, yeah. pretty punchy. It, um, and oh, it, it goes, was very, I mean, know, it, it was one of the greatest cars. In a nil to 60 in 4.2 seconds. Yeah. That is, even today's standards, it's pretty Well, uh, pretty let's put that in good. perspective. This went zero to 60 in 4.2 seconds. When the F40 Ferrari came out in 1987, that was the fastest production car. That went zero to 60 in 4.2 seconds. Same as an F40 twin turbocharged, 478 horsepower, yeah. was the exact zero to 60 time as this. So it was 40 years 20, earlier. Yeah, 30 years, whatever it is earlier. My math is terrible. But yeah, yeah. so it's, to put that in perspective, that's, that's pretty amazing. Because 4.2 in the mid 80s was considered just crazy, you know. Yeah. I mean, when this car came out, zero to 60 and anything under 12 seconds was considered Oh, that's pretty quick. But I think that is as well why it was considered, and you know, yeah. the, 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 and many people say it's the first ever supercar, and yeah. I think to, rightfully so. You know, if you look at what was done, what the whole concept behind that is, you know, there is from a technical point of view, there is no difference in terms of the performance compared to the D-type to right. the race car. It is just you know doing the ultimate bare minimum in order to make it roll legal. So there is a bit of a chromy bumper, right. rear lights. The, the you know the luggage carrier in order to to, to the a roof a bit of a slightly bigger um, screen a passenger door in all honesty that's not really a door it's more like an you know yeah like it's an entrance like helper a, or yeah, something like entrance that entrance helper entrance yeah, helper like I would say it's that. an entrance helper yeah yes yeah, so not and actually a door some, some front lights and that's yeah. it everything else is I, pure I, race car I like when the English do that like when Norton came out with the electric <laughs> starter it was electric assist <laughs> you get one you get uh, uh, Okay, then, now you have to kick it. <laughs> now, it might have caught, but it, uh, uh, and then that's all you got. It's like, like yeah, opening the, what you call it, door helper, what you call it? A entrance helper. Entrance just, helper. An entrance helper. Entrance helper, yeah. helper, just to assist you. <laughs> and, and, and hilarious, hilarious, a British understatement. I love the fact, like this would never get past today. Gas tank right behind your head, pretty amazing. You fill it up right here. And you know at high speed after you fill the tank, you're just getting gas all over your hair. Who cares? <laughs> I mean, I, it was one of the great drives of my life driving that Steve McQueen car. And that was not some super tuned, that was a car that had been sitting at the Peterson Museum, probably sat for a couple of years since anyone last started. We brought it here, we just cleaned it up a little bit, put gas in it, regular gas, not race gas. And my God, it was just fantastic it just, yeah. on every level. Audio, sound-wise, the feel, very, uh, the road feel. I mean, you know, everybody talks about, oh, no ABS, no traction control. This, of course, had none of that. But it was just one of the great, great drives of my life. You have an air box here. Is there, is there filters in there, or is it just a box to keep? 
the, sort of birds and stones and things from getting in the motor. <laughs> there is mainly mainly an airbox. So you, you see that the, the air, it, it pulls the air through the bonnet. You see that air oh, channel there? I see, there? right, right. Oh, so yeah, the, okay. air, the air gets in from the front. Oh, I so see, So that, yeah. that it gets fresh air from the, from right, the front. Right, right. Well, so. it's just, and how long did it take to, these are hand built, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's no sort of assembly line process here. This is, you know, people talk about Rolls Royce and these kind of cars. They're not hand built. This is truly a hand built yeah, the, car. You know, this is, um, we, we had the, we had a long debate about how much, how far do we go with like tools and things because um, we wanted to do it properly. So we actually went the, the traditional route. So we actually laid down a couple of couple of tools, but only like hand forms. So they, they are actually hand formed and pressed and then they're hand wheeled it's because we thought that in order to make it really sympathetic, it needs to show some of those wheel marks because right. it's a different, um, you know, you can see it. It's, if it's too perfect, it looks artificial almost. Right, right. And, uh, and you know, these cars, they were hand-built, so we decided to do the same and thing And each again. one of these rivets have been recreated, haven't they? Yeah. We have, a, actually, we have, a, you know, our team, sometimes we call them the rivet counters because right. uh, um, they make sure that, first of all, every rivet is where it belongs, and then the right rivet is in the right place because they're, like, different rivets, um, all sorts of different different ones. And, and did you build them at Browns Lane? Where, did you build them where they built the um, originals? We we have a we have a specific site that we use for right. those purposes, um, and of course what we have is we have a couple of people that work with us for the specific parts. So you know, in the end, you know, there is lots of people involved. Did you dig up any of the old boys again? No, but not strong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, any of those guys come of course, around? Of course, of course. I mean, that we, must have been very exciting yeah, we had, for them. We had, we had Norman Dewars out when we, when we... Oh, Norman, of course. Oh, yeah. Norman Dewars, yeah, we had, it, we had him along. When we, we had the car for a shakedown before it was actually painted and all that, just to have yeah. that. So Norman came along and had a look at it, and he was very happy, which is kind of, you know, the, 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 the big tick in the box for us. And Norman was probably the age you are now when this thing was built. Probably, yes. I mean, probably, that's, yes. that's yeah, pretty crazy. Yeah, absolutely. It? Yeah. That's fantastic. I mean, he's 97 years old and he's still driving Jags. I mean, that's, that's really something. And he's got yeah. all his original parts, doesn't he, Norman? I saw him. All original, no, no fake leg, no nothing. I didn't investigate no, properly, no. But, I think he, but I think he's all original. No, all absolutely original authentic. Parts. Yeah. And that's, that, that gear lever, that knob looks almost modern and contemporary, but that's what they did, isn't that's, it? That's what they, the way they were. And it's like, it's funny because it looks strange that it bends so much forward, but that's how they were. And that's like, it's, but it's very short ways to, to, to shift. You've driven it, you know, you know yeah. how it is. Before we go through the dash, let's, let's close the hood here. So people see the line of the, of the car. I love leather straps on a hood. It just seems okay, it's a bit so. of bit of extra security, you know. So you're... let's start here. What do we have here? So we got a wiper there. Right. So as you can see, you know, other than the D type, they have they have actually a, a wiper motor there, which right. drives the two the two wipers. So that mm -hmm. is an additional thing that the race car didn't have. You have a panel light. You have a headlights. You got side lights, which is right. you know literally all that you, you that you would need. And then you got you know an engine here, the starter button, the ref counter, very important. Um, and then you have the, you have the um, speedometer, so just see. The speedometer goes to what is it, 180? What was 180. the top speed of this car? Probably close to that. They probably yeah. could go could go close to that. Um, you know, it depends as well on the road conditions, etc. You know, but they, they did 172 on Le Mans, and it's right. the same car. So right. um, um, you probably get close to that, which is, you know, again, it's quite, quite fast for that. Um, and of course, you have a couple of um, other meters over there. And, uh, is this and then, uh, that is the lights, yes. And then you have the steering wheel, and you've yeah. got the pedal. So right. basically, it's very basic. It is all you need, but nothing, nothing uh, but that. Now we, we can't take this one out in the street because it's going to the auto show and it's not legal. But I'm going to show you. Uh, here's a clip of me driving the Steve McQueen car, which is the exact same car. It was really exciting. Take a look.
almost 60 years old. Yet it handled it. I'm, I'm astounded at how light the steering is and how light the front end, front end is compared to XKEs and 120s and 140s and 150s. There's a bit of clutch slip, you can hear that. We can adjust that. Well, let's start it up so people can hear what it sounds like here. Yeah. Can you get in the entrance helper? And, I'll, uh, I'll try my best. Can you fit in this car? You're a big I guy. I think I can. Yeah, I think I can. I'll, um, I'll try my very best to do it. There's the entrance helper, as you can see. Yeah, let me hold the entrance helper. Fantastic. Thank there you. There you are. I'll shut the entrance helper. Thank you. You have the fuel pump. Yep, a few ticks, commemorative ticks, and then. see why Enzo Ferrari called the Jaguar the most beautiful car in the world. It wasn't this one, it was the XKE, but he certainly could have said about this. Well, I can't thank you guys enough. <laughs> can I give you a hand there? You need a transmission I think, jack? We can get I think I'll, I'll be able to get out. Uh, yes. Uh, it's a bit, of a bit of a thing you need to do to get yeah, in and out, yeah, but uh, very good. when you practice, it looks very yeah. good. Before we go, if you have a classic Jag, or any Jag really, you know, I do this with Mercedes, with Porsche. I really try to encourage manufacturers and, and people who have these cars, get your parts from the original manufacturer because they're the ones that know it. They know what fits, you know, aftermarket stuff that doesn't always work. When you buy it from the guys who built it, uh, it's, it's going to fit and it keeps these old cars on the road. So I can't thank you guys enough for, for no, just bring, I got to say recreating. It's not, it's, it's making another brand new 1956 Jaguar. Just unbelievable. See you next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>